Hey guys, Nate Bailey here. Have you ever used Onyx Hunt? Well, stay tuned and I'm going to show you how I use it. All right, hey, this is Nate Bailey with Barebow Hunters and uh, the Life Outdoors, and I'm here. We talked a little bit about on the Barebow Hunter podcast how I use Onyx Hunt, which is an app for your phone. They have Onyx Maps and they have Onyx Hunt, um, which is an app for your phone that turns your phone into a GPS mapping software. Um, oh, I don't know. It's it's more than mapping software. More, it's it's like a navigation system that you can mark up and and then it gives you all sorts of different information so i'm going to show you how to use that because i said i would on the podcast if you haven't checked out barebow hunter podcast please go over there it's on itunes and stitcher um the specific uh episode that i was talking about is uh, episode 13 jerry and i were talking about over the counter tags so head over there um subscribe leave us some likes and uh I think it's on iTunes. It's it's like a stars. Leave us some stars, but uh, if you guys would, and also um, give me a subscribe at the bottom down here. There there should be a subscribe button right in here. Please give me a subscribe here and pass this along to your friends. It helps me get this stuff out to you guys, and I greatly appreciate it. All right, let's jump right in here. So, first of all, if you haven't got this app, you can get it on your phone, and it's uh, hunt on or on X hunt. And then you could get that downloaded on your phone. And then once you have your uh, password and username set up, then you could come on onyxmaps.com and you could use the desktop version. And everything that you do on the desktop version will end up on your um, on your mobile version. So, and then your GPS will work on your mobile version as well. So anything that you mark on this version will go right straight to your phone. It's amazing. This is you guys, this is the best stuff there is out there. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and log in and then, uh, we'll take a look at this. I think you guys will really appreciate some of this, the way that this works. Now, one of the things that I have to point out here is when you do, um, when, when you get the premium subscription and I think it's man on X guys, you're going to have to probably um, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think it's thirty nine ninety five. Uh, it's one of those apps that I don't even look at. I just buy, I, you know, I, for, for under a um, hundred dollars, this, oh shoot, for over a hundred dollars, this is probably one of the best hunting tools that has revolutionized my hunting um, in the last few years. So, do I like it? Yeah, <laughs> very much. So you get five states with that. Of course, I'm in Oregon, so we're gonna we're gonna put my um, my bar now. You see, I have your statewide bundles here in Oregon. Now, for some reason, it starts me off way over here in the North Carolina. Of course, don't pay any attention to all my waypoints when we come in here, guys. I'm gonna show you though how I um, and I dog got it. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to show you how I use um, Hunt on X to find, don't go looking for my camera over there either. Anyhow, how I find um, hunting spots. So these are my, these are my uh, bear hunting spots. And I'm just going to pick a random spot up here. Let's go take a look. And so we have our random, our random hunting spots up here. And this is all Oregon. Okay. Now, 
I don't know if this holds true up in the northern end where this is, um, but down in southern Oregon, um, everything that I'm going to show you on how to how to find uh, good bear habitat in southern Oregon will apply. So um, first thing I like to do when I'm looking in spots is, is I like to find and I turn off my public lands. So turn off your public lands to get rid of that overlay. So when you're looking in here, you could get rid of that overlay. And when you get rid of it, now you could actually see where the clear cuts are. Bears want to be in clear cuts this this time of year. They they come out in the spring and and we're talking spring mostly. But they come out in the spring and they start feeding on this grass that grows in these fresh clear cuts. And you can see quite a few clear cuts here. So um, all of these all all of these patchwork is is clear cuts. So what you're looking for is you're looking for clear cuts that um, are pretty much um, out by themselves, like the end of a clear cut spur. Uh, if you look, so this is a main road here. It comes out, and then this this road is a logging road that goes through the clear cuts. Now, if you look at, at the way that this clear cut looks right here, this, this would be a clear cut that I would look at. And the reason is because, for one, it doesn't have a road down in the protected bedding areas. Okay? Like this one has a road right through the protected bedding areas. And another thing is, here, let's just go to, let's just go to a satellite for now. Okay, so it doesn't have a road down there. There it looks like there's a lot of ground in between here. You could probably look across and see across here, but that's a pretty good distance before. And if you were to shoot a bear down in here, um, you're shooting downhill. This is quite a ways uphill from that, so it's a pretty safe area. But this would be a place that I would look look for clear cut wise is um, a place where these roads don't go to the bottom of it so like on this clear cut here you see how the road this is the landing right here you can always tell where the landing is it's always uphill and, and then all these little skid trails go up to the landing so that's where the yarder pulled the logs up and so you can pretty much tell where the landing is and when you're glassing for spring bears what you're doing is you're sitting on these landings and you're glassing all this area down here so this clear cut wouldn't be a good one because for one, you could be sitting up here glassing and then have some Yahoo come in here and drive right into where you're glassing. And even if there are bears down there, he's not going to see them, of course, because they're going to hear him coming and they're going to take off and get back into this woods. Now, the difference between that clear cut and this clear cut is if you take a look here, um, see that you could see all of the skid roads coming up to this landing. Um, even if somebody did drive by and there's bears coming down in here, it probably isn't going to scare them off. So you, you could just sit and watch all these areas. Now, the bears don't seem to come out into the middle of the clear cuts that much. They want to stay on the sides. And, and of course, these clear cuts uh, are pretty fresh. Now, correct me here, guys. If you're on X, guys, correct me if I'm wrong. But um, there's no way of telling how old this map is and I'm probably completely wrong here. It probably tells me somewhere how old this map is. And why is that important? Well, it's important because you want to know, like this clear cut right here, it's not greening up. So what you want to do is you want to go and take this clear cut. And um, because I don't know how old this map is, what I do is I, I go, okay, I want to see this clear cut right here. And then I'll go up and see, see the coordinates right there. The coordinates represent where my cursor is so wherever I place my cursor that's the coordinates I'll write those down and then I'll go into Google Earth and then pull it up on Google Earth and then I'll look and see what the date is on Google Earth because you could adjust the date on Google Earth so what you want to do is you want to look for the spring closest closest to the date that you're hunting you want to look at that spring to see if that clear cut is brand spanking new or if it's an older one um, so because I look for the the pretty fresh ones, and then if this is like last year's clear cut, it's going to green up. So it, it'll green up this next year, and the grass will be fresh, and the bears will be on it. Now, you won't want to pick a clear cut like this guy right here. You see all those trees? You wouldn't be able to find a bear one in there, and once the trees start growing up, the grass isn't as succulent, and it doesn't have as much um, sunlight, so it doesn't gather as much nutrients. So... That's one of the big ways that I use this to find bear spots. Now, if I'm rifle hunting, 
Well, even when I'm rifle hunting, I, I don't I don't shoot from the landings because I'm not good enough, so I sneak down to wherever the bear is. But um, next year, I'm going to bear bow hunt this. I'm going to hunt it with my traditional stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a lot of times if you look here, I'm going to turn on the top or on the hybrid. So the hybrid gives you topo lines and all these topo lines. So if you see topo lines leading in a V like this, see how that's a V right there. That means that that's uphill. Okay. And then if you see a V like this, that means that there's a Canyon right there, which is a perfect place for a bear to hide out. They love those canyons. So I try to find a clear cut that's on an edge of a canyon. Most of them are, most of the clear cuts are on an edge of a Canyon. So you, you go and, and you try to find those. Now, if that's what I find, then, um, of course you got to get out there and check it out. But, um, so you could look at your, your topo lines here and you can find little benches within the clear cut. And a lot of times I'll, I'll get close to the edges and sit on that bench. And the cool thing about a bench is say that was a bench right there. And then it was real steep on either side. Well, I could sit there and I could sit at the back of it and I could peek over and see if there's a bear in there. And if one comes in, then I could get back on that bench and I'll put a predator call right on the edge and I'll, and I'll be able to call him to that bench. So I'll, I'll call him within range. So that's one of the big things about, um, using on X and, and I'm going to, I'll do some different on X hunt, um, on X hunt maps. I'll, I'll do some, how I show you how I scout for elk, how I show you how I scout for deer. Um, how I use it for fishing as well and duck hunting. So there's all sorts of different things that I use this app for. It is probably one of the best apps I've ever had. Okay, so now what happens? So say you don't, I'm going to take the topo map off. So just go back to satellite. Okay, now say, say you don't want to hunt. You're like anti going up and talking to these timber companies because all these timber companies, you have to go ask them before you, it, it would be called, um, trespassing if you didn't realize what their public stance was allowing you on their land a lot of them allow you on a lot of them don't so you have to you have to go to the timber company and what it's the cool thing about on x is it tells you exactly who the timber company is so you could go on their website or give them a call and say hey you know what's your policy for allowing people to hunt on your place most of them say just go on and hunt and pick up after yourself and don't or some of them will say, hey, look, we've had so much vandalism and stuff that uh, we do it by permit. So so check that out beforehand. Disclaimer. Make sure you check that out. Don't just go, well, Nate said I could. No. Okay. So maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you don't want to go through all that. So you come over here and turn on your, your uh, public lands. Now you can see that there's not very much public land here. And the public land that is here doesn't have any clear cuts in it which tells us something public land holders. We need to get some clear cuts in it. Now look at this. This is Clackamas County. So Clackamas County has a lot of clear cuts on their place. I don't know what their what, if they allow you on it. I don't know all that stuff, but you do have some area there that's public land. I don't know how they, you know, treat their public land. Some counties let you on, some don't. So you could go check this stuff out now though. That's the cool thing. So say you're looking through here and you're going, oh man, you know, I'm looking at all the BLM and there's no clear cuts on any BLM and it'll bring up the location and um, there's no clear cuts. I don't know what I'm going to do now because I'm not going to hunt on timbered land and I'm not going to hunt on uh, private land. So uh, I just need my, my public land so what am I going to do so one of the things you could do is you could go from your state bundles so we got your state bundle here and I'm going to go a little bit south because I know it better and I'm going to try to do this without giving away all my spots down here um, I got a lot of buddies that have helped me out with some spots and I don't want to give away their spots either so let's see where am I at here okay and of course I'm talking let's let's look at south their sweet home so we're starting to get down in my neck of the woods okay so l let's start talking about um some of the some of the stuff that you can do if you don't want to hunt um timberland so you come over here your state bundles you have all this stuff well you could turn on your national uh nation nationwide layer and they have a cool layer in here that'll help you because um 
this this will help you find spots that are kind of like clear cuts but they're not and it's the historic wildfire so you click on the wildfire now that has put another completely a uh, new layer on here so you could cut, zoom out and find some of these wildfires boy there's none in there usually there's well oh it's taking a while for it to load my internet's being slow today it's, bear with me guys um so let's see where 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 let's find a wildfire here Come on, give me some wildfires. Isn't that weird? I'm asking for wildfires. Well, I'll go down this area. Let me zoom out. Spring. Oh, that, look at there. So there's a wildfire that was in National Forest. So you could definitely hunt this, right? So say you're, you know, you're in an area that you know that there's going to be bears at. Um, you, you know, bears live in this area. Well this wildfire is going to grow grass. So any pl place that gr burns through, you will have grass in that area. So it's a great way. Look at this, this even has Jones. Are there any bears in this area? You guys from over there on the Eugene area? You guys need to get in there. That looks like some good stuff. So it even tells you when the fire was, 2017. Now, as the fires show up, they'll show like this one here is uh, yellow. That's an older fire. I, and it, a lot of times it'll tell you when that fire was. But the, the reds and the oranges, so this fire was um, a little older than this one. So the reds show brand new fires. So those are places that you should look at. Um, it, especially if you want to hunt private ground um, or public ground those are exactly the places you should look at look at here we got Salt Creek I'm sure I'm, look you guys now see there's another fire that's 2014 that one would probably be something that I would look at too there's probably spots in there that have real green grass now if you want to know if there's green grass in there you could just zoom in and look at the spots wow that looks pretty rugged actually um, but you could, you could also go in in spring on Google Earth, get those coordinates, and go back over. Now, there's one more thing I'd like to show you. So let's let's go ahead and get rid of the fires. Let's go back to our state bundle. Now, and we'll go back down to Oregon. I don't know why it goes back up once I uh, switch here. But there's another thing that you guys need to know about. And it's called this Oregon Access and Habitat Program. $4 of your license goes to this program. And what it does is it pays for access for you guys to be able to get on some of this land that uh, that is held don't look at any of that um, that is held uh, let's see if we can find there's John Day Baker let's go up to Legrand okay Legrand okay so some of this l it pays uh, uh, ranchers or private landholders um, money for either you to access it <laughs> For either you to access it or to um, allow you know the herds to go on there and live without people messing with them or to allow you to get to some private or some public lands um, and this program there's tons of them in the state you could go to my odfw.com listen to our podcast from last night um, and if you go and check that stuff out you guys there's a lot of public land that um, or a lot of this uh, access and habitat program and it's just so cool that on x those guys are cool enough now that they put this layer on i didn't even know it was on there and i'm like hey cody kellum you know born and raised guys i was like hey cody do you know if the on x guys know about the access and habitat program and he texts me back like in 10 minutes and says oh you mean this look at this layer and i felt like an idiot but um see what it did now look look at this this is all land that is uh, private ground and this is Hancock Forest Management and they ha they have now opened this up for access now you have to check each piece of land and see what the access is because sometimes it's by permission sometimes it's you got to go check in sometimes um, it's just free reign and sometimes it's only open to people that have hunting and fishing licenses because you're the ones that paid for it so um, you guys need to go in and check this stuff out. Now, on I'm I sit on the committee for this, so we we on this committee get to decide 
where the money goes and what piece of land this money goes towards. So we really need, like a lot of these have check-in stations, we really need you guys, when you use this land, to check in. That way we know that you guys are using it. Because if it's not getting used, um, we'll find a place that is getting used and we'll we'll uh, put the money towards that. So that's what we're after, you guys. So go use these places. I'll show you another one down here. There, there's some pretty cool stuff. I'm I'm going to go over to the Steens, and um, there's some access and land over here, right there. Look at this. And so that this allows you to go across and get into all the backside of the Steens Mountain. And it's pretty crazy. Look at all this access land. So you could chuck or hunt. And, and if you draw your Steen's uh, sheep tag. So anyhow, guys, I hope that helps. I'm going to go through and do a little bit more deer, ducks, um, elk, and the stuff that uh, I and how I scout for them. Because I'll show you there's certain ways that I could show you how you could scout. And you can minimize the amount of time that you have to put. You, if you're going to put your feet on the ground you know, make the most of it. Um, and I could show you how to do that. So I'm going to do that um, in future videos. So if you like what I've done here, please, please, if you like what I've done here, come down here and subscribe. Um, enjoy the, and, and, and I hope you enjoyed what I've showed you here. I use this all the time. Um, there's so many things you could do with this. You could add waypoints. You could do all sorts. Maybe I'll just go through and do a, a tutorial on how you use that. But please subscribe. Go check out uh, Barebo Hunters group on Facebook. And then also leave comments and uh, go to the Barebo Hunter podcast. And we'd love it if you leave us some five-star reviews. <laughs> all right. Take it easy, guys. We'll talk to you later.